Good morning, neighbors. It's good to be here again. We're ready to sing and praise the Lord and thank Him for this beautiful morning and this beautiful day. And we can walk in Him. This song is called Be Thou My Vision. It's a very old hymn, but uh, I like the backstory behind it. It's based upon the story about how a local Irish king uh, made a law. No one can light a candle or a fire because we're going to honor this druid pagan god. But this Christian man said, I, you know, I'm not going to do that. So he went to, on to a hill where everyone could see him and lit a great bonfire, you know, to be, a, be the light. You know, as the scripture says, we are called to be a city on a hill, and it's not always going to be easy. It's going to, we're going to face persecution. So, it because, so of course, it became a famous story. Then hundreds of years later, this, this man, he went blind. Not the man who lit the fire, but this other man, he lit, he, he'd gone blind. And he thought of that story, and he wrote uh, the lyrics, of course, in his own language. Well, then in the 20th century, someone sat down and translated into English. And someone took a, a, a famous tune of theirs from their country and put the lyrics to it. And what was interesting, the tune that they found is actually called Slain Hill, which is the name of the hill where the man lit the fire. So God, he has his ways of bringing everything back to what exactly the way it needs to fit like a puzzle. So let's try to sing this. I don't often sing it, so but it's, a, uh, it's one of my favorites, a beautiful song.
we're thankful we are thankful for that that he is still our vision and if he is not you can make him your vision he can give you the eyes to see and we can see him through the light you know of the truth that's what we need his light for it reveals all the truth and it shows and, and darkness flees i like the fact that uh light is active dark is reactive if you open a door light floods in if there's light to there to flood in and darkness flees from that light so wherever light is the darkness flees but we must make him our vision so we can see in acts chapter 9 and verse 1 it's a very famous story that uh, many of us learned in sunday school growing up and saul is a very evil man and so in verse 1 it says and saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the lord went unto the high priest think about that i mean he is breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the lord the ones who would follow him and desired of him letters to damascus to the synagogues that he may that if he found any of this way whether they were men or women he might bring them bound unto jerusalem and as he journeyed he came near damascus and suddenly there shined round round about him a light from heaven and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him Saul Saul why persecutest thou me so he is so I mean he's not even content just uh, I'm gonna clear him out of my area he he wants letters he wants introduction to go into these places and if I find them I want permission to bind them and take them back and destroy them you remember Saul stood there when Stephen who was they call the first martyr you know uh of course, Jesus was the first for uh, in the in the you know he is the ultimate martyr after the uh, you know but Saul he's got a hand in all these things and he wants to journey to Damascus to find these people and drag them back but as he's going he hears this voice Saul Saul why persecutest thou me and he said who art thou Lord you know he sees this is power. What, what, where's his power coming from? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick, kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. So there, he's having this amazing experience, but these people, they're saying, you know, I'm hearing something, well, what is it? But he's actually been thrown down. And he's being asked, why are you doing this? Why are you persecuting me? And, you know, it's a voice from Jesus. Remember, Jesus has already been crucified. But he's having, Paul is having this amazing experience. Then in verse 10, or Saul, his name's still Saul at the time. In verse 10, and there was a certain disciple at this Damascus named Ananias. And to him say, said the Lord, in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. I mean, that's an amazing thing. You're hearing an audible voice, an Ananias. And uh, this isn't of Ananias and Sapphira fame. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And if you go into the story of Saul, you know his name he's you know he takes on a new name paul you know that which denotes ownership but i like it because if you read little details in paul's life he has a hard time with his eyesight after this the blinding light that he sees in this experience he but his vision has changed you know he went from a man who wanted to persecute the church to jesus christ is now my vision i can see only him you know, and he suffers great things for the name of Jesus Christ. The very one who people would call on that he would persecute, he now gets persecuted for because his vision has changed. You know, and let our vision change. You know, but his 
he could see he but his vision for himself he could always see himself honestly he would say i'm the chiefest of all sinners you know his grace abounding to the chiefest of all sinners i persecuted the church he was i'm sure he was um, probably his pride was oh my goodness this is you know to tell people that i did this but you know what when you're in the presence of jesus all pride just gets melted away and you realize what you actually are that i persecuted the church i did these things he can save you and now his vision became so clear he had a clarity of vision it's he saved me he can save you he can do this for you i don't care what you've done he can save you and that is really the testimony of all of us you know of jesus christ our vision it should really humble us we don't see ourselves as such a great thing but we want to like this man light a fire on a hillside say look you know i'm putting myself out here because the king himself said don't do that don't light a candle and i'm lighting a candle up here on this hill you know a bonfire really and let him be our vision and i and i like in verse 12 and hath seen in a vision you know we need a vision of what we can be of what the church can be and we go towards that and even when we make our mistakes we well that's my goal you know and anything else in this world if you make a mistake you just keep on you're oh man if you're building a house oh i made a mistake tear that out and we're going to keep on doing it. i'm not just going to give up on my house so let us keep on doing this let him be our vision today and look through his eyes and everything will just become very clear if we can look clearly at him so god bless you have a good day i pray in jesus christ's name amen